Winning the Delano Polo Award for the round of Ohio is Luciano Savarol, driving car number three for Alan Hodges and Carl Walter, the Colton Morrell Altair. The outside of the front row is Packard Carroll in car number two. Now, Packard Carroll's future at Volpe, I think, has been secured because uh, Volpe's reserve driver, Chris Davenport, has been signed to drive for Launch Energy next season. It looks like Launch Energy is going to form its own team, and they have signed Davenport as one of the drivers. Frankly, I think Davenport should have been on the grid full-time this season, but um, be that as it may, it's good to see that Davenport's found himself a ride. Uh, Chris Davenport from San Francisco uh, is currently the boyfriend of Alexis Rainsford, the former two-time Master Cup Drivers Champion. When I first saw Davenport, I uh, thought he was a woman, to be quite honest, but, uh, well, he's a good chap. Definitely one of the more colorful personalities in the TM Master Cup Series paddock. I don't think there will be as many full-time cars next year as there are this year. However, I think there could be more independents on the grid. And we've already have a pretty intense independence trophy battle, so next season could get even crazier with as many as six or seven independents per race instead of only four. The Ohio Motor Speedway is the shortest track on the TM Master Cup Series calendar. It's under half a mile. This track has very short straights and very wide turns for a track this size, so we could see some people's patience wear out towards the end of the race. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Luciano Savaral leads the field to the green. Packer Carroll, the hometown boy, on the outside of row one. He's from Columbus, Ohio, and this track is in Columbus, Ohio. On the inside of row two, there you see Michael Sykes in the 44 car having a run at Luciano. He won this race last year in a complete upset victory when he was driving for Bill Barclay. Now, Luciano comes off the final corner, and Luciano will lead the first lap. Michael Sykes in car 44. Trying to take over the lead from Luciano. He's pressuring him hard this early in the race. Sykes, he really going at it. He won earlier in the year in Russia. Here is uh, Chris Johans and Zach Duff. Both of them were sent to the back of the field because of their antics in Quebec. The 42 car, VJ Pushanda. Uh, I think this is his last race in that car. However, the team wouldn't say if it was or it wasn't. So there could be, looks like uh, Pushanda could have a reprieve here. Here's Adrian Devereaux lurking in third place in car number one. As usual, Devereaux was very quick throughout practice. Didn't qualify as well as he'd like. A little, a little mistake. I dropped him down the order a little bit, but uh, we'll have to see if Devereaux can uh, sort of sneak his way up and take his uh, third career short track win. Melanie Cleveno in car number 74 is in trouble. A puncture on that car, and she's jamming up the entire outside line. I'm surprised this didn't bring out a yellow flag, but... um. Whoa! That was Brand that was Brandon LaRoe in the 24 car that just missed Melanie Cleveno in the 74 as she was diving into the pits. And uh, Cleveno's day has not gone uh, too well. In fact, her weekend has not been um, she, it's not been a good weekend for Cleveno. This is her first oval start in the TM Master Cup Series. She's only run one oval race in the past, and that was a TM Europe race not too long ago, and uh, didn't exactly do too well there. Cleveno is uh, going to go, I think, three laps down if Luciano can get around her. Now, uh, Cleveno is not exactly rolling over for and playing dead, uh, which I'm not really sure why when you're several laps down, but at the same time, Luciano Salvarol is not catching the 74. Yulia Nasova is running in fourth place. The former Cariala Grand Prix winner has never won on an oval before. Nasova is, however, in a very good position to do so today if she keeps up her weekend pace. Arto Kakinen, car number nine, is uh, one. His only oval win came on a short track. Leonid Roderick in the four. Uh, if I can, if I mention all his oval wins, we'd probably still be here tomorrow. Michael Madrigal has a tire go down from 28th place. The Independent Trophy driver has not been having a very good weekend in the M&J car. Michael Sykes is holding station behind Salvarol. Of course, uh, he won here last year, and he dropped through the field and uh, charged back to the front in car number 44 um, last season. But uh, actually, he was driving the 45 for Bill Barclay. In fact, uh, Sykes, he uh, was not expected to win that race because he didn't even practice very well qualifying the bowl and uh, just charged to the front when it mattered. Here's Packer Carroll in car number two, as I mentioned earlier, the hometown boy running an eighth right behind... Uh, Packer Carroll is uh, Ryan Matthews and Dale Roswell, 9th and 10th. And there's a log jam behind Matthews and Roswell. Uh, Roswell been doing a very good job try, uh, keeping Tom Delgado behind him. Here's Marcus Leonard in 13th place. He may be an owner-driver next year because uh, there's been reports that he may start 
a team next year with uh, the other driver being Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. Try saying that name with a straight face. And um, Quiggles Jr. could be in the Master Cup Series next year, and wouldn't that be a good thing to see? Here is Brandon, Lara, uh, Brandon LaRoe going a lap down as um, Melanie Cleveno in the 74 is going to get around him on the inside. LaRoe has uh, not been in the pits yet in this 24 car, but uh, apparently after trying to dodge Cleveno entering the pits, uh, this car's uh, handling that car has gone south. The 52 car of Tom Moore is in 22nd place. He was second at Michigan, started 33rd. He's driving like Koya. They did very well at Carbondale with Greg Woodard almost winning the race. And it makes you wonder if the Lycoya is one of the best cars on the short tracks around here. They seem to be handling very well it, around here, and uh, they're not really losing as much speed as everyone else uh, coming into, into the corners. Davina Henton in uh, 24th place is uh, kind of uncharted territory for Henton. What's she doing back here? Um, Henton's morale has been very low lately in that number six car, and uh, this certainly is going to help things when she qualifies way in the back and her teammate qualifies in the front row. Another disappointment this season is Craig Mummert. He's running in 25th place in the Dalton Blackbird. Now, um, the points table may suggest that Mummert has completely annihilated Charlie Waters. However, Charlie Waters has uh, slowly been making up that deficit uh, from all those penalties he had earlier in the year. Luciano Savarol finally is getting around Cleveno. Cleveno moves over when Savarol uh, gets close enough, so Cleveno is playing the role of the good back marker here. Uh, as Sykes is going to get around the 74, and looks like Devereaux will do likewise as they are encountering Michael Madrigal and VJ Bouchanda. Madrigal is already a lap down. Bouchanda is still on the lead lap. And Bouchanda moves over and is a very gracious back marker. Uh, it's not really something I've had to say about him all season long. However, he, is had, he has had several runs as we ru good runs in that car. Uh, here's another guy having his first oval start. Mika Pasan in the uh, Cariala runner-up. Actually, I think he's had a couple of... Uh, Oval starts in Formula Overdrive, but he has not had any in the TM Master Cup Series. In car number 12, the Majestic Motorsports car, really just sort of uh, slowly acclimatizing to this track. Here is Matthias Taub in car number 10. He's running in 7th place, and he cuts a tire down on that number 10 car, so hard break for Taub. He's uh, been having a pretty good season, even though he's hit just about everything but the hot dog stand uh, throughout the course of this weekend. Uh, had a very messy practice. The team repaired the car in time for qualifying. And uh, car number 10 is going to pit very early, and that's going to drop him way off cycle as far as pit strategy goes. Here's back with Nasova in the car number 8, and Brandon Leroux is not exactly moving over for the 8 car. And uh, as you see, Kekkonen, Roderick, and Carroll have all caught up. Nasova running a little bit wide, so uh, I think the frustration is beginning to rise uh, as Arto Kekkonen is beginning to breathe down her neck in that uh, car number 9. And uh, Roderick in the 4 car looks like he's just patiently waiting there as well as Packer Carroll in the two. So, the Sova in the eighth is probably going to have to hurry things up here a bit. We're on lap 50. That's the one-quarter mark, and Luciano Savarol is still in the lead with Michael Sykes sitting right behind him. And as he's going down through the field, you'll notice Kevin Dwyer is up to 16th place in car number 72. He's had a disastrous weekend. Charlie Waters having a good run as well. Chris Johans has worked his way up to 21st. Henton up to 23rd. However, that's sort of by default. Michael Sykes is doing some very aggressive defending. As you see him there, holding the inside to keep Devereaux from having a, making a move on him. Uh, this has been uh, going on for some time, and um, Devereaux hasn't really called anything into the pits, but I don't think he's uh, exactly too happy with Michael Sykes uh, choosing uh, many different lines out there. Cameron Taylor in car number 126, his rather hideous yellow and white car, is going to finally uh, have his engine go on him. Uh, Taylor has been one of the luckier independent trophy drivers uh, his luck is what looks like it's run out here, and that's going to seriously hurt his uh, independence trophy chances. Kevin Dwyer in the 72 car appears to have run over some of uh, Taylor's debris and hit the pit lane. Uh, Dwyer in the 72 car has not been having the best of seasons because, uh, well, the car has just let him down way too many times, it seems. It's either just been not handling right or just has failed on him, and it looks like uh, today is just circumstances have taken him out of the running because he was having a pretty good run in this in this car. He was on the pole in Brands Hatch, believe it or not, but um, there's a lot of Kevin Dwyer fans out here. He's from Minnesota. One of the next great American hopes for the future, his father, six-time Master Cup champion Benny Dwyer, uh, won several races in this 72 car. Car 12, Mika Pasanen is just about to lose a lap in the uh, Majestic Motorsports car. His teammate, Ryan Matthews, just lost ninth to Dale Roswell, the oldest driver in the field. 
Roswell and the Freedom for Palestine car number 22 is having a very strong run in the Black Diamond car. This Freedom for Palestine entry has uh, been very, very fast all throughout practice. In fact, he actually won the second practice uh, before qualifying. So Roswell, car number 22, has been having a very strong weekend so far. And uh, you see Tom Delgado moves up to 10th. Oh no, Roswell's in trouble. Car number 22 has encountered a problem. He pulls it onto the apron. But that is a huge, huge heartbreak for that team. Roswell brings it back to the pit lane, and uh, they bring it are going to eventually bring that car back onto the racetrack. His day not over yet, though. Uh, still time for a good points day. Anyway, here's Luciano Savarol challenging Mika Pasanen in car number 12. Some cars in the field are beginning to make their first pit stops. So, we'll have to see how things go from here. Here's Tom Delgado in car 37 running in 8th place. His contract runs out at the end of the year. And I don't know whether or not the team will replace him uh, and the team. Oh, no, Delgado's in trouble, and that's definitely terminal. Oh, I was just saying earlier, I don't know if the team will replace him or keep him. But uh, his race, uh, anyway, is certainly over. Now, I mentioned earlier that some cars are hit the pit lane, and some of those are lap cars, like Scott Stoidler in the 50 car, and they're not playing too nice with the leaders. Stoiler actually just gave a bump and run to Adrian Devereaux, and you can bet Devereaux took that very well. Um, uh, Alan Hodges' team uh, filed a protest, I understand, uh, with the 50 car. I can't say I can argue with that. Michael Sykes taking a very defensive line, you can see, just to keep Stoiler behind him. Because this is the battle for the lead here between Sykes and Savarall, and I really don't think Stoiler should be interfering, but it looks like... Uh, Sykes doesn't want to be, get himself put in the wall, so he lets him go. Oh, boy. Anyway, here's Chris Johans in the 64 car up to 19th place, and he's got problems as well. The 64 in trouble. Chris Johans has been having a very strong run so far. Coming from the back of the field to 19, he's been having a strong season. This is not what he wanted. Here is uh, Luciano Salvaral. Is he right on board with him? Here's Roswell coming back out in the pit lane. The Freedom for Palestine entry. Look out, look out, look out! Oh, almost took his teammate Peter Short into the wall. Roswell in that 22 car. Uh, just kind of demonstrated why some people don't like the pit lane at this track. Because um, just the way pit in and pit out are. However, it's um, much less hazardous than it is at, uh, say, the West Midland Bullring. Here's Adrian Devereaux in car one. Uh, he's still sort of in the high lane because... Um, some of these back markers are just not playing very nice with them. And um, I'm not really sure why, because Devereaux's in third place, and they're not really uh, racing him. But I think that's probably why he's staying up on the high side, because, because uh, he's not really racing them. And the car in fourth, Yulian Asova, is quite a ways behind him. So uh, Adrian Devereaux uh, may be having things a little bit easier, but uh, at the same time, Yulian Asova in the eight car is not exactly reeling him in. Anyway, back here with Jose Luis Martinez in 8th, Yamino Tenshi in ninth. Haven't talked about either of them today, but they've been having a pretty good battle back here. Uh, Tenshi in particular, in that uh, 25 car, having a great run. Tavina Henton in car number 6, Craig Mummert in the 29 are going to trade a little bit of paint. Henton's not going to be terribly happy about that. Mummert gets into Henton again, and um, uh, Craig Mummert looks like he's beginning to force his way through the field. Um... Some people call that real racing, others don't. I don't think, I think Henton's among the latter. Close call there between Anthony Griffith in the 08 car and Blake Camphausen in the 15. Camphausen leaving the pits, Griffith entering Camphausen very heads up driving. Griffith actually drove Camphausen's car here last year. Luciano Savarol in the 3 car, he's on old tires, and you can tell because the lap cars are flying past him. Looks like Luciano's taking things kind of easy at this point. I don't think he wants to throw that car into the wall or um, get run over by a lap car. This is Peter Short's first race on an oval track. He's running in 26th place, and he's made it further here than he has in his uh, past two starts put together. So a uh, round of applause for Peter Short for having a solid run in the Black Diamond 19 car. Uh, it's about what I would expect from a complete rookie. Uh, reasonable performance there. Luciano Savarall hits the pit lane on lap 86. Michael Sykes in the 44 car is staying on the racetrack. So he's got Anthony Griffith right behind him. He's not racing Griffith for position. Sykes just trying to make sure he gets ahead of Savarall when the pit stop cycle cycles out. So, Nasova into the pits. He saw there on the right side of the frame in car number 8. 
And it looks like Clevino is coming out. Now, Davina Henson, car number six, has worked her way up to 10th. And as you can see right here, uh, things aren't getting better for Henton in the six car. Um, even though it looks like it on paper, Henton's really just been kind of sliding backwards in uh, the six cars. She hits the pit lane um, in the six car. So Henton, in, uh, not been having the best of seasons with Pulte. We believe she's leaving that team at the end of the year. Is Henton, wait, Henton's in trouble. I think I saw smoke behind the six car as Sykes hits the pit lane in the uh, 44 car. There's Adrian Devereaux, a very close call with Ian Cooper, and I don't really think that's one person you want to be just throwing blocks on all over the place. Um, there goes Luciano Savaral by Devereaux. Now, Devereaux has not pitted yet, so uh, Luciano is not racing for position as Arto Kekkonen in the, in the nine car pits. Adrian Devereaux in car number one is going to hit the pit lane on lap 95. So, Devereaux in the pits very late. But this is going to put Matthias Tau back up the running order, up to third place heck, for a while, actually. But he's going to have to hit the pit lane very soon. Packer Carroll is going to inherit the lead in car number two in his home race. This is just past halfway, so you can see sort of how the pit stop cycle has played in everyone's favor. However, the car number 10 of Matthias Taub has already gone back into the pits, so he is going to drop back down through the order. And anyway, here is Jose Luis Martinez in third. His chances of staying with Katsev next season, I think, are pretty slim because the team prefers Rubles to talent because uh, looks like in a couple of weeks they're going to test you have Jenny Kuznetsov and Vladimir Simonov in this car. And uh, no mention of Martinez having a run on uh, next year. And that, I think, is a shame because the Mexican driver has... Uh, very polite Mexican driver has made a very good name for himself this year. He's had several strong performances and has matched Nasova on more opportunities, a more uh, a more races than the team is willing to admit, I think. Uh, Martinez, uh, I hope he's back next year with all the solid runs he is having. Here's Packer Carroll in car number two, continuing to lead the race. There's Chris Jahans right in front of him, the two-time Marla champion, and uh, a many champ uh, m and Racing uh, owns that 63 car driven by Michael Madrigal, and they have many Arla titles to their name, so a lot of Arla experience in that uh, bunch. Here is Luciano Savaral, as he's going to try to make his run on Packer Carroll, but it looks like Carroll has encountered a lot of lap cars, and oh boy, lap cars, we all know how well they've been behaving today, haven't we? Uh, or haven't they? Anyway, there's Kevin Dwyer, that 72 car sliding all over the place. Hang on to it there, Kevin. And uh, there you see. The uh, 64 car, Chris Johans, is going to try to get around. He gets around to wire on the outside. Here's Kurt Pliskin and Marcus Leonard. Uh, another rumor about Marcus Leonard is that he could be joining PSI next year. However, uh, more like rejoining PSI next year because I think, personally, Leonard was a good fit for that team because uh, he, could he could take all the spotlight away from Kurt Pliskin because uh, Pliskin's never been comfortable with it, whereas Marcus Leonard doesn't really seem to care one way or the other. In uh, car triple nine, Anthony Griffith in the 08 car is the other PSI driver. And, uh, well, there's been a lot of rumors that Griffith is not too happy with the way the team's been treating him because uh, the general consensus is that Pliskin's sort of the number one driver in that team. Anyway, Michael Sykes, car 44, beginning to run down the leaders. This 44 car is trying to have a shot at winning twice here at Ohio Motor Speedway. Luciano Salvaro caught on the outside around some back markers. Here comes Martinez in car number seven. He's having a run at Savarol in the number three car. On the inside, Martinez has got it. So car seven up to second place. Roderick is beginning to show up now in car number four. So now Roderick is going to try to make his, his name known at the front of the field. Packer Carroll's on the outside as Roderick has gone by Luciano, it looks like, as he moves up in the second. Car number four, the launch energy machine. He's leaving this team at the end of the year. I don't know where he's going to wind up. Looks like it's going to be either PSI or Volpe. Martinez in car seven has gotten by him now. So Roderick has gotten shuffled back. Martinez is on his way forward in the seven car as Jose Luis Martinez is making his way, is making his way around Packer Carroll on the inside. Wait, Packer's fighting back. Luciano takes over the lead in the seven car. So Martinez in the Katziv, has moved back up into the lead of the race. He's been in this position a couple of times this season, uh, notably in France where he rolled the dice and almost won. Roderick in car number four, having his having a run forward in uh, 
in this car. Roderick is getting around Packer Carroll on the inside. Luciano Savarola is following Michael Sykes, but he has dropped back a little bit. But it looks like Luciano is going to try to make his way back up towards the front in uh, car number three. Tom Moore is running in 10th place. Is this the Lakoya Magic at work? This car seems to get much better traction coming off the corners than anyone else. And they also seem to be able to take the car deeper into the corners than, every, than just about everyone else. However, they're they don't seem to be able to do it in qualifying trim. They seem to be able to do it better when it counts in the race. So, looks like the Lycoya magic is definitely working for Moore. As he's beginning to, uh, definitely looks like he's got a good shot at getting another top 10 run here today. And possibly a top 5 if things keep up. Here's a guy turning some heads. Charlie Waters in ninth place. Great run for Charlie. We, I slagged him off quite a lot earlier in the year, but he looks like he's beginning to turn the tables and show that he can actually race clean for a change. Here is uh, Jose Luis Martinez in car number seven is reporting a vibration from the lead of the race. Now I wonder if that's just Martinez reporting uh, a sort of vibration just because he's getting nervous or what are the like. Michael Sykes just went by him. Martinez goes to the pits. He got into Roderick. That's the first caution of the day. A lap 146. Oh, Anthony Griffith. The 08 car piles in, but Martinez definitely was reporting a problem. And it was so bad that it looks like he had to bring it in. But Martinez was very apologetic to Roderick over the radio, but definitely something was very wrong with that 7 car that he didn't like. And he had to bring it into the pits, but uh, it looks like he might have just misjud he misjudged that, definitely. Got into Roderick, but the 08 car of Anthony Griffith just hammered into Roderick's car. So um, Griffith takes himself out, and... Uh, Roderick and Martinez would talk after the race, but uh, reportedly it was a very uh, friendly conversation between the two of them. Anyway, Michael Sykes, as you see, is leading the race in the 44 car. Where have we seen this before uh, last year? Hmm. Yulina Sova, car number eight, in with a shot at victory in the in the cat in the other cats of Sova. Never won in a noble, as I mentioned earlier before. Looks like she's going to try to do so today. Adrian Devereaux, though, is right there in the one car. Never count him out, and never underestimate him. Devereaux in the one car is the championship leader for good reason, but right behind him, his points rival, Arto Kekkonen, is just waiting to catch De any mistake Devereaux makes and take advantage of it. Scott Bates in car number 88 is going to challenge Luciano Savaral for fifth place. He is going to end up taking it because he's going to use the lap cars and the preferred line to his advantage. As most of the lead lap cars on the outside lane are, uh, well, slowly going backwards. Tom Moore is now holding off Savaral. Now, uh, this is a great run by Tom Moore and this team because uh, Tom Moore's team light record is uh, not very stellar, actually. To be quite honest, um, I didn't really expect too much of him coming into this year because, uh, really, he doesn't have too many good results to his, uh, to his name. But, um, well, it looks like uh, he's turned it around when it matters the most in this 52 car as uh, he's following Scott Bates to the front. And now uh, Tom Moore has actually worked his way up, I believe, into second place because Scott Bates just blasted around all those lap cars and took into the lead. He got himself into the lead. Yes, Scott Bates to the lead. Now here's that 52 car. Moore, he's get, getting shoved out, almost shoved out of the way by Luciano Savarol. Savarol on the inside in the three. Oh, Moore plays it very sensibly. Doesn't uh, turn down into him. And uh, Luciano works his way back to second. Scott Bates on the inside of Melanie Cleveno in the 74. Didn't quite have the position there. Anyway, Luciano Savarol is gaining ground on the 88 car. Arto Kekkonen has moved his way up to third in the nine. Arto is definitely on the charge. He's gotten around Devereaux, and now he's setting his sights on uh, the second place car of Savarol. Craig Mummer, car 29, been having a pretty miserable day. This mechanical failure puts him out of his misery. And the car 29, there was a turbo failure in that car. Luciano Savarol gets it crossed up and he's fighting that car now. Savarol looks like he may have used up his tires, so he's now sliding, all, he's now sliding up the racetrack. Arto on the inside in the nine. And look in the background. That is Tom Moore and Yamino Tenshi has worked her way into the picture in the 25 car. But now Luciano is going backwards in car number three. As now Zelda Ashby is not really in contention here, but Ashby is uh, uh, still going to be a factor here. They're going to have to deal with the 55. Scott Bates continues to lead. Arto Kekkonen still second. That's Melanie Cleveno in the 74. 
And we're going to see if Clevino plays nice here. Uh, doesn't really look like it. I think that might be because Clevino's racing a car up there for position. But uh, Clevino maybe just kind of hang on right here. Chris Johans in car 64 pits on lap 185 as a mechanic of... As uh, he sends something wrong with the car, and yes, there is smoke billowing out of the back of that car. He's out of the race. However, Johans causes a bit of a stack up here. Chris Johans causes a bit of a stack up. Scott Bates lifts off the throttle. Here comes Arto on the inside. Car 9 works his way back to the front as Arto Kakinen takes advantage, and he takes over the lead of the race. Car 88, Scott Bates going backwards. Tom Moore on the 52, but coming around eight, uh, the 88 car as well. But Scott Bates. Definitely, that was a big mistake, and it's probably going to cost him the win because the laps are winding down quickly. Here comes Tom Moore now. He's trying to get his second podium in three rate in his third start this year. The 52 car goes by. Luciano making a charge as well. Tenchi on the move in that 25 car, but Luciano's going to try to get third from uh, Scout Bates. It looks like he's sliding backwards slowly. But now, going to see if Moore's have No, wait a minute. Scott Bates may have something for Tom Moore in the 88 car. I spoke too soon. Uh, but anyway, it looks like Moore is going to clear the 88 car. He's made his move on the 88. Savarol has as well in car number three. But Scott Bates definitely looks like a mistake cost him uh, quite dearly when it mattered the most. The 88 car has lost the lead. He's back to fourth, but it's still going to be a good showing for Scott Bates and for Tom Moore in this 52 Lycoya. The 88 car of Scott Bates is going to slot in back in fifth place after a very strong run. Just one little mistake, and that's all that it takes for you to drop four positions. That's how competitive this series is. But back to the front of the field. Arto Kakinen, car number nine in the Gessler. Getting held up by lap traffic and slower than the cars behind him. Arto Kakinen takes win number two of the season in a fantastic drive by Arto Kakinen and by everyone in the top five. Just gave it their all, but Arto came out on top. Scott Bates wasn't the only team EFR driver to do very well today. Ian Cooper's teammate got all the way up to sixth at the end of the race. Packer Carroll slightly disappointing run there back in seventh, but... Uh, he still had a, a reasonable showing in front of his home crowd. I think he'll be happy with that. Michael Sykes in car 44 came home in 8th. Yulina Sova and Ryan Matthews rounded out the top 10. Jose Luis Martinez had a decent enough showing in the 7 car. Uh, and Marcus Leonard came home 12th. The final car in the lead lap. Mika Pasta and Zach Dove, Zelda Ashby. Brandon LaRoe in the 24 car had a good run today. Uh, several close calls for him. During all the chaos towards the end of the race, Adrian Devereaux in car number 1 came into the pits for a puncture. Apologies for missing that, however, there was a, a much more exciting battle for the lead uh, to look at. So even though he does get points for the day, I don't think it's going to be exactly the points thing he was looking for. Speaking of the points, let's have a look at those right now. Devereaux's lead is shrinking, as Arto Kekkonen is now within striking distance. Luciano Savarol jumps Lena Grotter to take over third. Ashby gains a position in the points, up to eighth. And you'll also notice Michael Sykes back on the top 10 in the 44 car. And Scott Stoiler in the fi is uh, now in the 50 car, continues to drop two places in the standings after deciding that Tutino is a better option for him to challenge for the championship than the Mitchell and Sons team. Make of that what you will. Anyway, Yamino Tenchi is one of the other big gainers this week as Tenchi jumps up six positions. And after a very hard-fought week, Tom Moore gets to pat himself on the back by actually managing to score 100 points in the season. Good enough for 20th in the championship. And as you're about to see, it's going to put Tom Moore in a very good position to take out the Independence Trophy. He's two points ahead of Sauvin and still has one race to go. So I'd say he's done a pretty good job against people like MNJ Racing, Afterburner Motorsports, and the like. Speaking of the rather disappointing MNJ Racing Independence Trophy effort, Michael Madrigal still has one race to go. And pretty much unless he wins, I don't think he's going to even have a shot at taking out the Independence Trophy, so Madrigal really in trouble there. Dan Lechleiter in the 110 car also has only one race left to go. And like Tom Moore, he's driving a Lycoya, and the Lycoyas are very strong at the short tracks. However, the main driver for Lycoya, Greg Woodard, has a podium in his only start this year. Woodard, Moore, Madrigal, and Lechleiter will all be at the Gem City for the next race, the Round of Quincy.